Hello again, and thank you for joining this installment of Uniquely Union, a series of interviews to highlight the people that have made Union County the great place it is to live, work, and learn. Today we have with us Commissioner Jeff Brantley, and thank you for being with us, Commissioner. Thank you for having me. And tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to be a Union County Commissioner. Well, it's kind of like a uh, our current president, I thought we needed a little help, and I, I thought I would jump in. Okay. Um, your grandfather was a former sheriff of Union County. That's something not a lot of people know, probably. I didn't know it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Kenneth Brantley, he, uh, he served from 1950 to 1954, and that was two terms. It was only a two-year term back then. And your father was a candidate in 1972. Yes, sir, he was. Uh, there was 16 uh, candidates ran that year, and uh, he came in second. Clyde Rowe won the sheriff that year. Coming in second out of 16 is not that bad. <laughs> not bad. He did better than I could do. We used to, for whatever reason, have scads of people that ran for sheriff. I can remember that for years. There would be just these huge numbers of people. Right. That wanted it. Uh, you're a 1976 graduate of Horace Maynard High School. True. And you attended the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. I did. And you are the owner of Brantley Transportation. I am. It's a federally licensed tr trucking company. Uh, it was established in 1994. And you're a private pilot? I am. Have been. Well, I learned how to fly in Morristown. Uh, Miss Johnson taught me how to fly. This was in 77 or 78. Of course, she's passed now, but they have a statue of her at the Morristown Municipal Airport up there, mm -hmm. uh, pointing at runway 23. That's the way we always landed, came in and landed. Do you do a lot of flying now? I don't. I don't have a lot of time, uh, but I can still fly. And fishing and boating are hobbies. They are. You're in the right county for that, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. <laughs> And a few of your awards and personal achievements. You're a GOP delegate. I was. A state senate candidate. I was. Union County mayoral candidate. I, I was. And you're currently the chairman of the Union County Delinquent Property Tax Committee. I am. Is there any excitement involved in that particular Believe position? Believe it or not, uh, that's a boring job, but we've got results out of it. During the, uh, with this administration. We've moved some properties that um, weren't appeasing to most, mm -hmm. and we've got them back on the tax roll, so that's more tax money coming into the county. And you're the vice chair of the Union County Business and Industrial Committee. Yes, I am. What can we expect in the foreseeable future, do you think, as far as improvements to Union County's business and industry? Well, we definitely need improvement. Uh, the problem is, Dr. Bency, uh, uh, the space to put those businesses is limited. And uh, it's kind of like we've been talking about on another subject of building a new school. I mean, we don't want it on the main road. We've had enough main road schools. But back to the business industrial, um, I think we've got a good group to promote business in this county. Uh, we just need some cheerleaders. We need some lobbyists. And I think the mayor has done a fair job of be, uh, being a lobbyist. Uh, Danny Cook, with the, uh, he's chairman of the, of the business and industrial. And as you can see right down the street here, we, we started with the farmer's market, which that's good for Union County. But we need some meat and potatoes in Union County. And I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but Union County has missed opportunities to have those meat and potatoes in years back. Uh, we got a good group on commission. Uh, the new commissioners that are on there now, they're excellent. And as far as I can remember, it's the best crop that's coming to Union County or in, in the courthouse in a while. Uh, uh, like that. Also, uh, Deborah Kick is sick. Commissioner Kick, uh, Commissioner Meldebarger, she's had a stroke. She's sick. Um, I think there's one. Uh, Brenda Jesse, a former commissioner, 
she just got out of Vanderbilt today, and and I nearly went on in May. So we've had a lot of health problems on County Commission, but I I like for everybody to pray for those families because uh, they need a little uplifting right now. Um, things to bring out that we want to discuss. The Speedwell side of Union County. Well, I'm passionate about the Speedwell side and have been in my first term and in this one too. Uh, very good people over there. Uh, they're the lost colony. Mm -hmm. People want to give them to Claiborne County. Claiborne County doesn't want them. Most of Union County doesn't want them. Why would Claiborne County not want them? I have no idea. I, I would think they would be interested in them if nothing else to collect taxes from them. Well, they pay into Union County. I, I did research this. Uh, they pay about $130,000 a year in taxes. And the only thing they have, and really it's not from the county, uh, is the dumpster system over there. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's from waste management. That's not even from the county. So those, those folks don't get anything. But I'm glad to say that uh, Mayor Bailey has uh, allocated $22,000 over there for a, uh, a senior, not a senior citizen, but a community building. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, they can use it as a voting booth. I don't know if you've been over there or not. I have to admit, in my entire life, I've been in the 13th district once. Is that right? Well, they got a, a, a voting booth over there, about uh, the size of a bathroom, and that's where everybody goes to vote. So it would be a, a dual-purpose deal. Mm -hmm. um, I think Mayor Bailey has mentioned maybe using a 911 double wide over in Sharps Chapel and take it over there and, and provide something else for, uh, not 911, the ambulance service. The ambulance mm -hmm. service. Would it not be simple? I've always wondered this. What's the distance between Sharps Chapel and the 13th District if you go across the water? It's not very far, is no, it? No, no. I'm going to say a quarter of a mile. It would seem so simple to build a bridge. It would. And back, I think it was in the 50s, don't quote me exactly, uh, but County Commission was given monies from TVA to put a bridge across there. Mm -hmm. And those monies were used for other things. They had the option of using it for the bridge or otherwise, and they used it otherwise. Mm -hmm. Because the only two ways to get there now are ferry, and you might take a private boat, I don't know. Yeah. And to go that long drive down mm -hmm. through La Follette, and that's right. the way I went, was that long drive. It's a very <laughs> enjoyable drive. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half around. But I've never repeated it. I've been there once in 54 years, so... Wow. <laughs> it's not something you do unless you really need to, unless you have a lot of time to well, pleasure I'm, see, I'm, I guess. Right. I, I'm passionate about that area and the people over there, mm -hmm. Glenn Edwards and James Brooks, and they're all great people, but uh, they're just left out. And thank goodness we've got a mayor now that that's taking a look at them. Mm -hmm. um, the new road between, we call it a new road, it's coming, between Minerville and Halls, this new four lane that's starting next year. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, uh, the way I understand it, and I don't have a lot on it, but the way I understand it, it's probably two to three years out. Mm-hmm. Now, I've heard they're going to start on it next spring. That'd be wonderful. But, you know, you believe it when you see the black top. Uh, that's what I told Mayor Bailey. I said, I believe it when I see it. But yeah. I think he, he did say that it had been delayed again. Oh, really? Uh -huh. And uh, But we've got priority. I mean, we're first on the list. Mm -hmm. um, another project's been talked about for years is a road between Minerville and Lateral that's straighter than the one we have now. Of course, I don't think it's on the drawing board at the present time, but maybe sometime in the not too far future. That'd be great, especially if it come out down there around Roberts Road, went to Tazewell Pike that way. Mm -hmm. uh, as you well know, when I was uh, 
my first term, I fought the uh, Sharpe Chapel Road to be a, a state highway, which it is a state assisted uh, monies wise uh, highway, mm -hmm. but it qualifies and the paperwork, the drawings are already done because it makes a loop from where you go into Sharps Chapel, you get to Horseshoe Bend, you keep coming toward Chuck Swan and turn just below my house, which is Big Spring or Big Sinks Road, mm -hmm. and it makes it a complete loop back over to Leadmine Bend Road, which qualifies it for. And I did try to get that on my first uh, try on commission, and uh, it was turned down mainly because the state didn't have the money they've got now. Mm -hmm. Now, your first term was what year to what year? Uh, my first term is same same term as Mike Williams when he started. Okay. 2000, no, no. Well, anyway, it was six, ten, I guess 10 years ago, mm -hmm. 2010, I guess. And you were elected this term, let's see, this is 2018, right? I was. So you're up for election again in 2022. Right. Okay. Um, they're going to get this road built between Hiles and Minerville. And one thing we know it is going to do, it's going to open up the flow of traffic. Do you think that that in and of itself will be enough to help Union County grow, expand? Possibly, but I'm not leaning real hard that way. I, I've seen uh, a business that employs about 300 people that was considering Minerville when Redgate was for sale. And they were coming. And uh, now this business is in Dayton, Tennessee. And it's 30 miles from the interstate down there. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it proves the logic that a four lane's not always the end result, you know. Uh, and we've got so many schools and things on the main road, you know. We, we just don't, I don't know. We just, we need help. We need mm -hmm. lots of help. We need help from our state senator, Frank, and uh, nicely, and and Jerry Sexton, and Dennis Powers, representatives, and I think they'll help us. I really do. I agree with you, Larry. Yeah, I get the feeling they really will. Mm -hmm. Now you had alluded to the new school a minute ago. Uh, we don't want it on the main road, and we know why because of the traffic congestion from the ones that are already there. Do you have any vision of where it might possibly be built? Of course, I know you have to buy land and people have to be willing to sell I'm afraid it. to say. I'm afraid somebody would jack their property up. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, I've heard rumors of Walker Ford Road. I've heard other yeah. things. Of course, it wouldn't bother me from putting it on Walker Ford. That's my <laughs> road, you know. I wouldn't mind having a school up the road <laughs> there. Um, it's pretty much agreed. I think they're talking about a new middle school, right? Yes, sir. Um, do you see that as a possibility in the next five years? If we're going to do it, we better do it now. We've got the money now. The, the county is financially stable. Uh, and the high school's paid off now. And as you well know, the, the school system and the county each contributed, I think it was $500,000 each. Uh, the money, that money has been set you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's building or I forget what the what they put it in. But uh, we need to make sure that money's not wasted. Now, school board uh, member Danny Danny Wayne Collins and I agree totally. We both think the school system should keep contributing and the county keep contributing the same amount, the million dollars a year, and let's, let's move forward. Let's build that school. Now, when you say the county is financially stable. Yes, sir. Um, compared to your first term, when you served on the commission, to your present term, I, I assume from what you say, we're more stable now than we were then, if for no other reason than that, yes, the high school's paid off. Yes. Is there anything else you attribute that to? Well, I'm sure there's many factors. Uh, I can allude to the school system. and. You've been in the school system how many years? 34. 34 years. Well, as you well know, I spearheaded a, a movement uh, that was not really popular with some uh, 
to remove by state statutes our former director of schools. Uh, I don't quote me exactly on the figure, but it's around $840,000 we were in the red. This uh, director of schools threatened to close uh, Minerville uh, Elementary and Sharps Chapel Elementary. He, he threatened to, uh, to do away with the bus service and and that's the way he was going to make cuts to make up for the eight hundred and forty thousand dollars. And I think my opinion is it was aimed at me, and that, but that's okay. But uh, the county don't need to suffer because of me. But uh, I went in front of the school board twice and uh, asked that he step down. Of course, we still paid him out. That's true, but. Jimmy Carter was brought in as director of schools. He has never asked for a penny to this day since I've been back. And since when I was, you know, huh? he's done a, uh, financially, he's done a great job with the school system. And as far as I, I'm aware of, Union County hasn't suffered any, losing anything, bands or f fields or anything else. So you got to give him credit. You may not, I may not always agree with Dr. Carter, but financially, he's done a great job with the school system. But speaking politically, is there anybody we ever agree with 100%? No, sir. No, there's not. And, and that's a fair statement. All right. um, let's go back to the years you were a Union County public school student which you graduated in 76, I right. graduated in 83. We mm -hmm. chatted about that a few minutes ago. Of course, we were students then, and our perspective was different. But do you think in, say, the past, I guess our experience had spanned 40, 45 years, do you think we're in better shape now educationally than we were 45 years ago? Yes and no. Okay. Uh, as far as instruction goes, yes, we are. As far as the method of instruction, no, we're not. Elaborate. Method of instruction, mm -hmm. Common Core. So, you know, you you could see if you anybody that watches the world news of, of mm -hmm. what's happening, even in Smith County, we had an incident happen of, um, and this is getting a little religious, but uh, they, uh, two atheist parents sued the school system. I read about that, and mm -hmm. uh, and the school system had to back off. So, uh, thank God our, our president wants, uh, he wants uh, Christianity taught in school. So do I. But you, you've got to be fair with everybody. True, true. But, and I have no problem with anybody's religion as long as it's uh, not radical. But uh, I'm hoping that Union County will continue to do the job it's doing right now. And I appreciate the job you do, too. I know we may not hit on the same cylinder sometimes, but um, my priority is Union County. Well, like I said, you know, you don't have to hit on the same cylinder. There's a fine art to agreeably disagree. Mm -hmm. And not everybody has the same opinion all the time. Right. But would you agree with me, this is my own take on it, that now, at present, there is more peace between the school system, the county commission, and local government than there has been for several years. Absolutely, I agree. And I just gave you a, the reason why it is. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion of that also is that when you get rid of a lot of the drama, I call it, mm -hmm. and that must be my theme for the night. I've alluded to that in other interviews. But when you get rid of the drama, then you can focus on what can be improved, right. what can be made better. So then we go to county government. In your opinion, and you would probably know more about this than I would, my focus is school system, but do you think that the present county government is better or worse than, we'll go 25 years on that one? That's a toughie. I'm, I'm really thankful we have an energetic mayor now. 
And like I said before, County Commission, the new members that were elected are outstanding. It, it paints a picture, a bright future for Union County. Uh, and they've stepped up the plate more than some of the ones that's been on there forever. And I, it, it makes me feel good to see that when I'm gone and when you're gone, it's going to move on. It's 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 going to have a uh, accountability, transparency, uh -huh. and it'll be prosperous. It's coming, and that's a good that's a good feeling. It is. That's a good feeling. That's a good outlook too. Yeah. Now you have written. Now I'm attributing this to you, <laughs> and you put it in quotes. Controversial commissioner. Yeah, there's a, one of my friends in Clayward County, and I have a lot of friends in Clayward County too. Of course, they're next door to me. Uh -huh. They got a great mayor up there, Joe Brooks, great mayor. They got a great sheriff up there, uh, uh, Bobby Brooks. And uh, yeah, I've got a friend up there who calls me the controversial commissioner. <laughs> and I guess it's because of things that he reads, a lot of local media things. And, and uh, I see the difference between me and your other commissioners, the, uh, the biggest difference as far as making a decision. There, I have no nepotism around at, at all. I'm not related to anybody in the sheriff's department, the uh, mayor's office, uh, school system. I can say what I want uh, to a point. But uh, I, I just want to do what is right. and. Uh, and I feel I, I have no regrets at all for anything, any decision I've made. I have no regrets. No, I'm not perfect. But uh, I see the direction that Union County is going is a good direction. It is. So when um, your time, <laughs> this sounds morbid, but all of our time is coming to yeah. an end, you know. When your terms of service on the county commission are over, what would you like to be able to look back and say Jeff Brantley made a positive impact on? School system. I really think the, the unpopular move I made with the former director of schools put Union County back to where it needed to be. Um, what uh, between now and the end of Jeff Brantley's service on the county commission, which may be 20 years for all we know, but where would you like to see the school system be then? In what perspective? Mm, any perspective you want to hit? Well, I, I, we've got a good system. Uh, we've got good people that are teachers. We said got, we got great teachers. But you know as well as I do, uh, Ronnie, there's, uh, there's teachers out, out there also just for a check. I don't know if it's in this county, but I've seen it over the state. And uh, there's not much improvement that I can see. The only thing that worries me is that the, the brick and mortar schools will be obsolete in maybe 10 years. I see that coming. COVID has helped That's that exactly along right. too. Yeah, I told somebody the other day, and people will, will look back and say COVID-19 was the reason that there's nothing but internet schools. And I hate that. I mean, you know, I, I come from a family of educators too, mm -hmm. and uh, and they they worked hard. You know, my sister, my oldest sister was principal uh, up in Greene County at Mossy. She's, I forget how many years she's principal there. She's retired now. And I've got others in Nashville that are uh, relatives that are educators and around here also. I've got a uh, uh, niece that's a uh, special ed teacher in Maryville. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand both sides of it. I mean, we, here we go again. We don't always agree, but we see. Mm -hmm. when uh, Who was the lady that took... Uh, um, the former director's position. She is interim. Patricia McKelvey? No. Ah, Marilyn Thompson. Marilyn Thompson. 
And, you know, she's always been uh, over the, uh, the union, the, uh, the school union. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, when they made her interim director, she told me that she now knows how both sides work. She said she learned a lot. She'd always been on the side, fight for the teachers. Hey, that's good. Uh-huh. But she got our side of it in county government also. I'm not talking about the federal funding. I'm talking about the county side of it. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know something? I understand it both ways now. And I think it helped her. I really do. It's almost something you have to live to appreciate, isn't right, it? Right, right. <laughs> it really is. Uh, so what I mainly am getting from you is that you feel like the county's made progress and overall is headed in the right direction. I do. And I really that's a do. great thing. I do. That's a great thing. And uh, when I feel that there's somebody over in the 5th District that that's able to passionately strive to help that district and the 13th, then I'll step aside and I'll I'll back them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Any last thoughts you'd like to leave us with? We have all the time in the world. Oh, okay. As long as people listen to us. (laughs) Well, I'm sure people don't want to hear this. Uh, The main thing I'd like to say in closing is don't always believe what you read. I would agree with that 100%. And uh, I'll do whatever it takes to do my job. I I take my oath seriously. And like I said, you know, sometimes it's not popular. I've stood by myself many times in voting. And uh, I'm going to do what's right. And if you vote against me, but you think you're, you're, you're passionately doing what you think's right, mm-hmm. hey, I respect that. I respect that. But if you're voting because Joe Blow's sitting three seats down, mm-hmm. that's a different story. Would you agree that a lot of it has to do with attitude, too? Yeah, my attitude's terrible. I know that. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. I, I would not mean to imply that at all. <laughs> but, I, I mean, people are going to disagree. Yeah. And But there's a way to do it agreeably. Yes, I agree. 99% of the time, I usually pull it off. But now I have my 1%, and some people's percentage is higher or lower than mine. But what you said about not believing everything you read, that goes to national media as well. Yes, yes. Because, honest to goodness... How, how do we know that what comes over the national news is actually the truth? We don't. Even we your don't. Fact, fact, fact checkers are, are bogus now. We only know what we're told. <laughs> That's exactly we right. We don't have access to the source. I guess my problem is if I was just given the chance to, to reply to some of that stuff that's written about me, I, you know, maybe it would be fair to mm-hmm. me, it, you know, even if they disagree. But, uh, no, I'm kind of like President Trump. I wasn't elected to make friends. I was elected to do help do a job for Union County. Mm-hmm. You can tell I'm a big Republican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a philosophy I have a problem with. In and of. <laughs> good, good. Um, but it is refreshing. This feeling. It's a, you know, history has uh, the era of good feeling. Yes. That was several several years ago. Union County, I think, overall has the era of good feeling right now. There's, yes. I don't think there's anybody out there that's really just out to push their own agenda or to hurt anybody. I hope not. I, I don't think there is. And I think that there's more unity than there has been on a lot of things. Uh, one thing that also has been mentioned previously, need for a justice center. Have you had any opportunity on the commission to have any input into that, or? Well, when I ran for mayor, when Mike and I ran, uh, that was one of my project uh, uh, projects that I wanted mm-hmm. to see through. We definitely needed justice center. Mm-hmm. I know Tennessee's trying to pass a state law now about the ankle bracelets and all that, which will free up some of the jail population, and that will help. Mm-hmm. But Union County's 
almost 20,000 people now, and it's growing all the time. And you're going to have crime with growth. True. And we do need a justice center. Uh, I'm willing to help any way I can. Another thing you was talking about, uh, if there's anything else I'd like to say, I'd say Union County's health financially is the best I've ever seen it. I have never seen the budget uh, so healthy. But the reason that is, is because I've never seen this many grants come to Union County. We have grants. I don't even know how many we've we've had. But that gives you opportunity. And that's free money. I mean, mm-hmm. point blank. It's free money. And, uh, and uh, Mayor Bailey's in a good position because it makes him look good. Mm-hmm. And uh, it makes us look good, too. But what I would really like to see, I would like to see all the elected officials and the county employees for one time, if it's only one time, to step back on the next budget, if it's as healthy as this one is, and give the taxpayers a property tax break. Even if it's $10, they deserve a break too. Oh, and we're yeah. sitting there spending their money, and we got plenty of it now. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it will take away from from uh, what programs are already in play, but taxpayers need a break too. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that may help on that is that when all the negotiations being done to build Paulette, that's when the thirty dollar wheel tax yeah. came in, right? Mm-hmm. And it's originally set to expire sometime, as far as I understand it. Is that your understanding? Uh, well, the way I understand it is it, it's going to be uh, when it's paid off, the tax. Will, but see, well, when that money uh, was appropriated for Paulette, there was also some uh, additions made to like Sharps Chapel School and I think Big Ridge, I'm not sure. I think all four, well, all except Minerville Elementary got an addition, I think. Right. But, all the elementaries. Yeah, that would be great uh, if... If it could, if it would happen, mm-hmm. I've never seen it happen. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that they never thought it would go away once it was voted in. I don't. Think. I agree, and I've heard that expressed. Right, and I forget what year uh, Paulette will be paid off. I think it's twenty twenty six or twenty thirty one. I can't remember. It's not that far, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I would like to see the property tax. Done away. I'm not, I'm not property tax. I'd like to see the wheel tax done away with. Mm-hmm. And you saying it's not far? It seemed like an eternity when they built high school. It a did. Five year note, yeah. didn't it? Now it's gone. Right. We we live to tell it all, like George Jones, I guess, on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing in Sharp Chapel. Uh, the mayor and I together got uh, the road next to the elementary school there, named George Jones Way, and of course. Uh, George's wife, she came up to Sharp Chapel, you know. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I've got pictures and everything. And uh, we had a little hillbilly concert, you know. Mm-hmm. She's a sweetheart, though. She really is. She, you remember the George Jones concert they did in that gazebo over there years ago? Well, that's where we did this one, same place. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And what's funny is the, the same equipment that was used when George Jones was there, musical equipment, mm-hmm. was used again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it was good for Sharp's Chapel. Oh, yeah. But, you know, yeah. that's another thing, Ronnie. I, I feel that Maynardville, even though it's the county seat, shouldn't get every grant that's coming and going. I want to see Luttrell, Sharp's Chapel, Big Ridge, Paulette. I, uh, I want to see them all get something, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm very thankful that Sharp's Chapel got the little little park at $25,000 grand up there. Mm-hmm. That was nice. But anytime they're throwing that free money out there, we need to grab all of it we can get. <laughs> no, I agree with you. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I'm proud of the school system. I don't always agree with everything you all do. Well, uh, it's... I, I'm proud of county government, and I don't agree with half what they do. And But we're getting there. We've, we've got good people that's there now. Uh, we got, like you said, there's a lot of us disagree, but in the end, we'll work it out, move on. In the end, 
at the end of the day, we want Union County to be in better shape than it was at the start. Exactly. And if you compare Union County now to 40 years ago, that's when I could probably start remembering things. Um, which leads me to a question. What do you think about Union County's historical preservation, its sense of historical preservation? Oh, don't try to get me on any sides here now. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what. Wanda Barley has done an excellent job. I stand behind her. I hate the dispute happened between the historical society and the schools. And thank God the county's out of it now. But I've told commission, I've told Miss Barley, you guys get together, work it out. Work it out. You don't need lawyers for this. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I really am proud of our historical society. I'm as proud of it as I am as a school system. And Miss Byerly, she's like the rest of us. She's getting up in years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to keep this thing going, even when we're gone. And uh, and I'd like also like to say, uh, Mr. Russell here, he, he's done an outstanding job. I mean, one thing about it, he saved my life a few times and doesn't know it. Because what's written in the paper is one thing, but what's on this on a stream, it, it's there. It's there. <laughs> I mean, you can argue with it or, or like it or not like it, but it's there. I will throw Aaron a good bone here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the Union County shopper was bought out by Knoxville News Sentinel, they yeah. shut it down. Yeah. The shopper was always a really good positive. Yes. And when it closed, that was just a void. You know, there was no positive voice. So then Aaron comes along with Historic Union County and restored our positive voice. Oh, and I'm very thankful to both of them. I am too. And, uh, yeah, when Cindy Taylor was at uh, the Hall Shopper, mm -hmm. she done an excellent job. And it's it's totally different than what I what I look at a paper for. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking at the political section or, or a misdeed or something. And see how people are dealing with it or the government's dealing with it or mm -hmm. local or federal whatever but uh, yes they have brought and i get their little i pick their little paper up and read it too mm -hmm. and uh, uh it's refreshing it is refreshing to hear good things it is would you agree with me on this point too i have for a long time thought one of union county's biggest drawbacks is that we don't promote ourselves enough. Well, uh, I think the chamber is is doing as good as they can. Actually, I, as you well know, I travel a lot, and I've gone to rest areas, and I'll see the pamphlets. You know, mm -hmm. say Union County, and that's great. I mean, that's it great. makes you feel good. You know, and people come from up north and fish, and mm -hmm. and. Even build down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sharps Chapel. Look at where I live. You know, it's uh, uh, Sunset Bay. Bay pays 11 11 percent of all taxes in Union County. Just Sunset Bay. Now, you and I might be a little prejudiced at Sharps Chapel. And agree on this. <laughs> we might be. <laughs> Sharps Chapel is one of the most beautiful places you'll see. Well, you were principal there for seven years. Seven years. Beautiful place. I would have gladly died. As Principal Sharp's Chapel School. It just didn't work out that way. Yeah. But I was very happy there. The community was very supportive. And that, my friends, is probably a good positive note to end on. It is. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Manson. I have enjoyed every minute. I've enjoyed it too. And thank you for joining us out there. And until the next time, I'm Ronnie Mitzi. And thank you. And have a good evening.